Hello, and welcome back to the Introduction to Biopsych webinar series. This is part two, Compounds and Transporters. Once again, I'm Alexander Shearer, speaking on behalf of the Bioinformatics Research Group at SRI International. In part one, I introduced you to the Biopsych.org website and the collection of Biopsych pathway genome databases, and showed you how you can go from the Biopsych website to the type of information you're looking for in the organism that you want to find it in. In this part of the webinar series, we'll be looking specifically at compounds and transporters, the kind of information we have for both, and where you can find it. Once again, we're starting on the Biopsych homepage. And as I mentioned, I actually like to start from the Biopsych query page a lot of the time. So I'm going to go over again and click on database search, like I mentioned before, and take us to the Biopsych query page. And as I mentioned in the introduction, I'm going to be using, through this webinar series, the example of arginine as a kind of walkthrough of the EcoPsych database, and using the EcoPsych database as an example of what a Biopsych pathway tool style pathway genome database looks like. So to explore this topic, we're going to try to answer a simple biological question about E. coli. Specifically, where does E. coli get its arginine? So to do this, we're going to start at the query page here. We're going to pick E. coli on the drop-down menu, and of course it's our default. And now I'm going to want to search. So I'm going to go down here to the query line, and I'm going to type arginine again. Except this time, I know I'm looking for the actual compound arginine rather than any specific other item, like a protein that mentions it or a pathway. So I'm going to narrow this down to compounds and hit submit. This yields a set of results for compounds with arginine somewhere in the name. And this may have given you some things that you didn't expect to see, you know. But here we know we just want plain old vanilla L-arginine. So by clicking on that, I get to this. This is what a biopsych compound page looks like. Compounds in biopsych are typically small molecules, but it can include almost anything that takes part in a transport or metabolic reaction. Some compounds and reactions will actually be classes rather than instances. For example, a reaction may mention an alcohol when its enzyme's activity is particularly broad or has not been narrowed down during the characterization process. So we'll have some compounds that are classes taking parts in reactions. Right now, though, we're looking at a compound instance, L-arginine. So let's see what a compound page actually has from top to bottom. At the very top of the page, we have the organism we're looking at, E. coli, and the compound name, L-arginine. Then moving down, each compound may have a list of synonyms. These are other names the compound is known by. There are also other terms by which you can find the compound in a search. So for example, if you were to come to the database and put in arg, or just arginine, which is what we did instead of typing actually L-arginine, uh, that will actually turn up L-arginine in a search. And so will 2-amino-5-guanidinovaleric acid, which you probably aren't going to intuitively think of to use to search for arginine, but you never know. The next step down, we have a display of where L-arginine falls in our classification system for compounds. Now, I mentioned in part one, browsing by ontology. If you were to walk your way down ontologies, as we did, you might get to L-arginine by way of an amino acid, an amino acid, an alpha amino acid, and a standard alpha amino acid, or an L-amino acid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can actually click back up here. You can actually navigate around through all these links. Uh, next, down here, we have component of. If the compound is actually a component of some modified form of a protein, for example, that will be listed here. And clicking here will actually take you through to that. Then, things you'd expect to find on a compound page, the empirical formula, the molecular weight, when available, and it usually is, a compound structure, a SMILES code. SMILES code is a searchable string that identifies the structure of an organic molecule. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, don't worry about it. You don't need to know it to use the database. But it can be handy to have to search. And it will also let you search for parts of molecules. Then below, things like the PKA, unification links. So unification links are links within the Biopsych database collection that go out to other databases that cover some or all of the same of a certain type of item as we cover. So for example, in the case of compounds, we have unification linked 
to the ligand database. Uh, later on, you'll see, for example, on protein pages, unification links to the Unipro database. And I'll point those out when we get there. Uh, this is a convenient way that we let you find out information here and then jump out to more information on the web about your item of interest. Down below that, we have, I'll just scroll down a little bit. a list of different reactions in which the compound is a component. Uh, first we have a list of pathway reactions where the compound is a reactant, then a list of reactions where it's a product, then a list of transport reactions, and then reactions without pathways. So for example, for arginine, unsurprisingly, arginine is a reactant in two different arginine degradation pathways, as well as a putrescine biosynthesis pathway and a tRNA charging pathway for the arginyl tRNA. It's in one pathway as a product, arginine biosynthesis, also not surprising. It's in two transport reactions. And then it's in these other reactions that are not part of, tra not part of pathways and are also not transport reactions. And one thing that I'd like to emphasize that you may notice by watching my little pointer turn into a hand here as I go over the page is the page is full of links. And as a default rule, when you're using Biopsych, you should try to click on stuff if you're interested in it. Uh, we're link heavy. We're linked heavily throughout the database. Uh, so for example, if I'm here and I want to go to the arginine biosynthesis pathway, which I'm going to do a little later, then I can just click through. I can click through to the specific reaction that converts L-arginine to L-arginine and fumarate. Or I can go down to a transport reaction. But before I do any of that, I'm going to continue all the way to the bottom of the page and see that we also show you anything that your compound is an inhibitor of, an activator of, uh, perhaps a cofactor for. In this case, we see that arginine is a competitive inhibitor of one enzyme and is an inhibitor by unknown mechanisms of two other enzymes. And again, you can click through. If I want to know what this enzyme is, I can click through on it and I'll go to that enzyme. And as always, at the bottom of the page, we have our four helpful buttons. So going back to the query page, the advanced query page, back to the biopsych start page, or to our feedback form.